Why do these things seem like good ideas to teenagers? These are both places where I live. Um, one is at our summer home and one is at our winter home. Um, and those are both activities that I myself, being one I engaged in and one I filmed. The bottom picture, yes, one of my brothers is sliding over the head of my other brother. Um, and for those of you who are close enough to see, they are both cracking up. Um, the other kids are jumping off, that's the ferry dock on the island um, where I spent my summers growing up, and um, the ferry's just left, and one of the things you do as a teenager is just as the ferry's pulling away, everyone jumps into the, the swirl that the ferry leaves, but you have to wait just long enough so you don't get caught in the turbines, because that would be bad. <laughs> I won't do it now, but I remember doing it then. And how many of you have either heard or been asked, what were you thinking? Why, why did you think this was smart? What made you... So there's lots and lots of work on neuroscience in impulse control, why, behave, why teenagers have a hard time regulating their behavior. Lots of brilliant work on that. I'm not as interested in that. I'm more interested in the, like, what got you to the point you had to regulate your behavior? Why didn't you get that pang in your stomach, like a cockroach pang of, like, no, thank you. No, I'm good. That doesn't feel right to me. Why does this feel? <laughs> like, yeah, okay. Um, so I decided to do something kind of radical and get some teenagers and ask them. So... Um, I asked them, I had brought them into my laboratory and had a, a yes button and a no button. And I said, I'm going to ask you some really some questions, um, theoretical questions. I just want you to, to answer simple yes or no. Do you think these things are safe or not safe, good ideas or not? I brought a couple so you can try, so you can see how difficult they are. Um, here's one, simple yes or no. Here's another, simple yes or no. And I'm pleased to report that my teenagers and the adults all got 100% correct. Everyone answered correctly, proving that there's no difference between 13-year-olds and 30-year-olds when it comes to decision-making. That's not true. <laughs> they all answered correctly. Well, what other information do we have? We have how long it took them. And this is important information. <laughs> so if you look at the safe stuff, the light bars are teenagers, dark bars are adults, and the bigger the bar, the more time. And for the safe stuff, there's not much difference. But when you look at the bad stuff, the adults look just like they're looking at the good ideas. They take a smidge longer, but it's not statistically significant. However, the teenagers, on average, this is on average, took 300 milliseconds longer, which is massively statistically significant. 300 milliseconds longer to questions like, is it a good idea to light your hair on fire? <laughs> um... Well, once, like, I had a curling iron, <laughs> and it was hot. No. <laughs> what are you thinking about? What could you possibly be thinking about? 300 milliseconds. It doesn't sound that long, but 300 milliseconds is a jump off a dock. 300 milliseconds is a car wreck. 300 milliseconds is a trigger pull. 300 milliseconds is a long time in the brain world. But more importantly, what are their brains doing? And this is what really surprised me and also didn't. When you look at the adults, and this is when we compare dangerous things to safe things, the adults show activity when they're making these decisions in their insula and in their amygdala. It looks just like the blue square study. It looks just like that abstract thinking about danger. Thinking about the blue square shocking you is the same thing as thinking about lighting your hair on fire. Your body, your bodily sense is going to go, no, mm, nope. And it's a quick, quick survival-related response. Teenagers not only did not have activity in these areas, where they had activity was in the most immature portion of their brains, the frontal lobes, the prefrontal cortex. So what were they doing? They were thinking about it. <laughs> but I don't expect you to take my word for it. I brought a couple of them with me. Good idea, bad idea, to go swimming with sharks. Now, do you see a picture of this, of, of, of sharks, or, and anybody can take this answer. You want to take that answer? Well, sort of, just like a little picture of what could happen, but it sort of depends on if you have, like, a buddy you're swimming with, then it would be more safe. You think it's a good idea or a bad idea? Um, sort of both, because it could be fun, but you could get hurt, too. What do you think? Um, it could be a bad idea if you were doing it alone, but it could be like a good idea because it would be a whole new experience if you had like someone guiding you and who really knew how to deal with sharks. 
Okay, now let's go. Now back watch this girl to closely. Why is it a good idea or a bad idea? Well, I kind of agree with Haley that it it's, would be a bad idea if you were alone, but I've heard like read magazine stories and stuff of people who have got hurt by sharks when they're swimming. So it kind of scares me a little bit, but it could be a kind of an interesting experience. Well, what do you think here on the Well, map? it could be both bad or good, but um, I think it'd be kind of cool swimming with sharks. Just it depends, like if they like hurt you or whatever, like it would be a bad idea. If you're like by yourself, like I agree with Haley with that one. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here, obviously. <laughs> um, First of all, I myself have gone swimming with sharks. There are conditions under which it's safe, but none of this information was provided to them. It was a simple, straightforward, generic, should you do this? And it's a really simple, straightforward answer, no. Um, this is from the Lair News Hour. They came to do a story on us, and I really wish they'd rolled the camera a little longer, because right after they cut it, I said to them, what would your parents want you to say? And they all went, oh, bad idea, no. <laughs> they know, they understand. But they don't quite have the like, huh? No, it's different. No, no, my parents would want me to say no. It's very different from, ooh, no, a, that jolt. Um, the third girl is a little different. She has an abstract response. She has a visceral response. And she even says, I've read things and heard stories about people who got hurt by sharks. So it kind of scares me. Uh, but it could be interesting. And so. <laughs> For any of you who no longer speak eighth grade girl, seventh grade girl, let me translate that for you. Oh God, I don't want to do this, but um, Haley, please don't kill me. <laughs> because Haley, two girls down, had already endorsed the idea. The first words out of her mouth after she flips her hair have nothing to do with sharks. The first two things she says is, I agree with Haley. And we're going to circle back to Haley because that's actually a very important point. The other thing about these kids that's very important to think about is this clip comes from Woodstock, Vermont. In the average day of a middle schooler in Woodstock, Vermont, what is more likely to kill you, a great white shark or Haley? <laughs> I say this is functional. This is highly functional. It's absurd to us, but their energy might be in the right place. They're following the lead. Their energy might be in the right place. So the first point here is what were you thinking? We have to replace with what were you feeling? But do not say this to a teenager. They already look at us like we have six heads. This will increase it to about 10. You don't want to say, like, what were you feeling? No. But appreciate that they might not have the same gut feeling about it. We, say, we think about our gut like it's an impulsive thing. Our gut's not impulsive. Our gut, our gut is acquired over time. Our gut is a collection of experience that they don't have yet. Um, what, what we might want to think about is that what, what we mean by maturation, your head stays about the same size as it is when it's five. So it's not like it's growing brand new parts. What's happening in there? Things are learning to work together and converse more fluently. Information is passed more quickly. Experience shapes who talks to who and how, and how fluently. So what we need to appreciate is that over time and with more experiences, these decisions will become more automatic. But they need the experience. 